Alright, Sir Alon, arguably one of the most memorable boss fights in Dark Souls 2. Especially because if you manage to take him down without getting hit in the process, he will take the honorable way out by committing seppuku. In fact, when you acquire his weapon, you yourself can stab yourself in the stomach. Which doesn't exactly sound like something you would want to do. However, it applies a quite powerful buff to your weapon by sacrificing a large chunk of health. However, did you know that this self-damaging buffing animation actually has a hitbox? And surprisingly, not even merely behind you. Hmm, isn't that interesting? So, what would it be like to go through the game using seppuku as your only form of attack? Well, that sounds like a playthrough that requires you to have guts. Otherwise, you have nothing to stab into. Now, there are some obvious problems that you will run into. First of all, that you will do massive damage to yourself each time. But on top of that, it's a quite slow animation, leaving you completely vulnerable right after you drained your own health bar. Moreover, increasing the damage output of this weapon also increases the amount of damage that you inflict upon yourself. Also, although the hitbox is not merely behind you, it is a very small hitbox that enemies can easily avoid, but it can also be a little um, Dark Souls 2-y, where it inexplicably doesn't connect at all at random times. Isn't that nice? But I'm sure I'll be able to deal with that, given that I have a sturdy six pack. And I'll probably go for all six of them. Yeah, it's going to be one of those playthroughs. Well, if you're going to get your gut in the game, you will need to get good at the game. So I hope that you have the stomach for this, because this is the Dark Souls 2 Seppuku Only Challenge. Now obviously you cannot start off with a fresh new character and already have the sword, unless you make use of the magic of PC modding, but even so I wouldn't have the stats to wield it. However that issue could be solved by picking a bonfire ascetic as a starting gift, in order to revive the dragon rider so that we could cheese him twice. However I made another modification, which in hindsight was not really a smart decision, especially because of the quote unquote punishment that I gave myself for using this mod in the first place. Which turned out to be much worse than just dealing with the issue that it was meant to circumvent. As you will notice, this entire playthrough was done in my underwear. Although that is business as usual, but my character was also in her underwear this entire run. Because the thing with, uh, well any weapon in this game, is that they break if someone farts in the general direction of said weapon. And it's worse for special attacks. You can only seppuku about 9 times until the sword breaks. Emphasis on about, because the durability damage has an RNG element to it, for whatever reason. So instead of juggling repair powders and whatnot, I modded the weapon to be unbreakable. And as a punishment for doing that, I would not be allowed to wear any armor, and I would also have to occupy one ring slot with the ring of the undead, to make up for the slot that would be reserved for the durability ring. However, the thing I realized quite quickly, and the people in the chat pointed this out as well, just dealing with the durability issue would have been a much better option after the first two hours or so. After all, the repair spell can be acquired early on in the Shaded Woods, and the first durability ring is found early game as well, in the Lost Bastille. So after an awkward start, most of the durability issue would be already solved, and once you reach the castle, you can get unlimited repair powders anyway. Whereas having no defenses in a run where you constantly inflict damage upon yourself while leaving yourself vulnerable for immediate counterattack is not merely a problem the entire run but becomes worse the farther you get. So even though I thought I was being sharp, but by deciding to fall upon my own sword I ended up stabbing myself in the foot. So yeah, that decision ended up being a giant belly flop because of my unwillingness to just stomach the low durability issue. But yeah, there you go, that's why my character is always in her underwear, and visually at least, never in a holder state. Now, there is one massive upside to this quote-unquote attack, because the damage output 
can be surprisingly high for a single hit. It's actually pretty absurd that it's not even meant as an attack, but can still hit so damn hard if it actually happens to hit the enemy as well. However, getting to that point is quite a nuisance since it's a boss weapon, which requires petrified dragon bones, which are hard to come by and on top of that, the attack is really awkward to use with its lengthy recovery time and the self damage is not even consistent. And not merely because of the buff, but also because there's some weird randomness factor involved. Now at least we did have a good start at the first two bosses, which didn't pose that much of a threat. All I had to do was to refrain from attacking in between the giant stomps, because my attack is so slow. And once the first boss is defeated, we can buy unlimited life gems after sending the vendor to the hub area. After all, her name is Melentia, trader of Majula. And her life gems are never known to deplete. Or something, I don't know. But we need a shit ton of life gems at least. As we need to heal after, well, essentially every attack. Not necessarily so at the start, but given how vulnerable you are after each attack, not being at full health before you stab yourself is incredibly risky. First of all because of my lack of armor, and secondly because even though I will be leveling my vigor obviously, but the further we get into the run, the higher my damage output becomes, and therefore I will inflict more damage upon myself, making the extra vigor not even mean that much in practice. And although the pursuer has an easy moveset to deal with, the timing issues due to my slow recovery were already very apparent. It could literally come down to a fraction of a second whether I would be able to react in time to prevent any further damage. At least after the pursuer I get my first damage increase because the buff is not elemental damage despite its appearance. It looks to me that it's slash damage that the weapon does naturally even though it is a thrusting animation. However the real damage of course would come from upgrading the sword itself. However dragon bones are not that readily available. Now fortunately you only need a single one in order to get it to plus one. And by using the fragrant branch from behind the second pursuer, get the fuck out of here! We could acquire one from the shaded woods. Oh hey, hey that, that's not what I wanted. Hey, I just wanna set that No, I wanna set No! I wanna set that the bonfire! No! What the fuck? Yeah. This is not good. Yeah, you know what, fuck? Let's- Oh wait, there's an Esther shot there that I want. Eh. Uh, can you please just return to your position? Okay, now, uh, can I set the bot? No! No! This is not- This is not right. Wait, maybe you can kill him from behind. Okay. Yeah! Uh. Yes, got him. However, right after getting my first upgrade, I kind of cursed myself. And I'm not referring to the pods scattered around this area, but by saying out loud that Natsuka would not pose a significant threat. After all, for whatever reason, most of my DS2 runs somehow end up containing a guide on how to fight Natsuka. And I could in fact approach her using my usual method, for the most part. Although the Seppuku's recovery time does require much more strict timing. But the thing is that I simply kept making uh, mistakes. However, on top of that, I ran into another issue, namely the inconsistency of the self-inflicted damage. You would think that this would always be the same amount, or at least a specific amount for the buffed version and for the non-buffed version. But no, there is an RNG element. And therefore it can be hard to tell whether or not you actually have enough HP remaining to, uh, well... Yeah, so if the boss doesn't kill me, I can end up killing myself. Well, a lot of people say that when they play Dark Souls 2, they end up wanting to kill themselves, so in that sense it might be a quite appropriate run. But the thing is that I had to be extra careful when attacking. And yes, there's of course always someone in the comment section saying that, yeah, you can get up Nutchka's back to cheese her. Like, why is there always a comment about riding Nutchka still? How about I get upon your mom still and take her for a ride? Oh, no, 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 no. Coming on a bit too strong there. But yes, I am aware of that. But no, I'm not going to do that. Then again, you can still comment about it. It's uh, good for the algorithm. Okay, we're getting close now. Oh, well, not with that damage. No! Okay, 
I explicitly said that in the sense of, hey, let's not fuck up right now. Yeah, got her. Nice. Yeah. About time. <laughs> God damn it. That took way too long for, uh, for Natsuka. Let's just heal just to be sure that I don't die on the way to the bonfire. Well, I would need two Dragon Bones to upgrade to plus two, as the number you need is equal to the upgrade level. And there's only one available before the next fight. But I might as well pick it up already. I mean, it's in a chest in the doors of Pharos. So unless there are like toxic infused dogs along the way and water almost at waste level to slow me down, I don't see any problem. Damn it, how the hell do I even get through here? I can't move through the water, fuck. And no, why am I toxic again? Son of a bitch. This sucks. Can I use a life gem on the... No, I get... <laughs> no! Nah. This part sucks. Eh. Oh, uh. Yeah. No! Why? Oh my god. Yeah. B team was like, yeah, you know, dogs aren't annoying enough, so let's make sure they inflict toxic as well. And on top of that, toxic didn't do enough damage over time anyway, so let's just double it. Well, thank you, B team. I hate it. Well, even though we cannot upgrade yet before the next boss fight, there are in fact more dragon bones after it. And it's the easiest fight in the game, under normal circumstances. Because the thing with challenge runs is that when you play with very specific restrictions, sometimes the easier fights can make your insides unravel. And of course nothing will make your stomach turn as much as failing against what is supposed to be a complete joke of a boss fight. Okay, he's dead, nice. Okay, oh fuck! I was too close to Magus. Fuck, not good. Yeah. How can this boss be such a mess? <laughs> I can't move! Fuck, 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 fuck. Uh. Cat in the boxy? <laughs> really? No, I didn't even hit him. What the fuck? I'm stuck. Uh. Fuck alicious. <laughs> I'm getting my ass handed to me by, by this boss of all bosses. What the fuck? Yeah, it sounds really weird that I have to save the Magus fight for later and come back when I'm more powerful. Therefore, if I wanted to have any chance at successfully getting past them while plunging a sword in my gut, I would have to go and plunge myself down into the gutter. After all, we need only one more dragon bone for the next upgrade. And there is in fact another one in a chest beyond the two giants. And speaking of upgrading our damage output, those giants quite literally hold the key to a giant boost in damage. But unfortunately they would also prove to be a giant pain in an orifice related to colon poking. Where my constant act of navel gazing would turn into a full on colonoscopy. But that would be something for much later. Which also should have applied to the rotten but since I was here anyway I thought I would give him a quick try. After all his moveset is very easy to deal with. But again under normal circumstances. But not when your attack is slow and leaves you on the verge of death. Which is already a problem for most of his regular attacks. But even if I could deal with those, his AoE attack would not give me any chance to react in time. So I would need even more Dragon Bones for him. However, we do now have the two that we need for the plus two upgrade. And another bone related item that could be helpful is sublime bone dust to boost my Estus. And while I was in this area anyway, I realized that if the congregation is already giving me trouble, then I had a gut feeling that the three sentinels would ruin me. And eventually I would need to get to the lost sinner, so I thought it would be smarter to go via the flexal sentry instead, even though I hardly ever fight him. Now fortunately his moveset is not that hard to deal with as long as you face the side wielding the clubs. A at least so I thought, but these reptilian rapscallions apparently couldn't stomach my gut wrenching performance and then repeatedly demonstrated 
how it's really done. What the fuck? Okay. Huh. Well, that's a thing, apparently. Yeah, the Flexal Sentry actually has a grab attack. Or a grab massacre of the killer kebab variety, I would say. Yeah, the only response to such nautical nonsense is to drop on the deck and get gutted like a fish. Oh well, jokes on them, because being the good student I am, first time for anything, I eventually transcended even the abilities of the master himself. However, then the joke was on me again, because although I thought I would now have access to another dragon bone in the cell next to Straight, it turns out that that requires the key that you acquire after the Rune Sentinel fight. Yeah, that's kind of a punch in the gut. So we kind of made our way here for nothing. At least for now, because beyond the Magus fight, there are two dragon bones. So together with the one that I thought I could get here, I would have been able to upgrade to plus three. But now, even if I would be able to get past the Magus and Congregation fight, I still would be one bone short. And again, it's quite an if whether I can make it past the easiest boss fight in the game. Oh, I missed! I fucking missed! What the hell? Ah, no! Okay, one of the priests is dead. Good. Oh, how did that not hit? What the fuck? How did that not hit him? Ah, actually, the extra damage is somewhat noticeable. Okay, quickly get- No, fuck. It's, it's not- That's- Ah, uh, not good. And now he healed. Isn't that great? Fuck. And now he heals again. Oh, more healing. Fuck you. Ah, finally. Ah, oh, fuck. Now don't die from the explosion, please. Okay, well, that's no more healing. Fuck, I can't react in time. <laughs> yes, this boss fight is suddenly uh, challenging uh, in this playthrough, yes. It is a lot better now than before. Okay, now... Oh! Whoa, whoa! <laughs> I literally almost still almost died. <laughs> Still not! Really? God damn it. Yeah, finally. Jesus. Well, guys, we beat Makers and the Congregation. Jesus, fuck. Oh my god. And we still have pretty much the entire game left to go. <laughs> Motherfucker. Well, as I said, now we can acquire two more Dragon Bones. Well, uh can not necessarily will maybe i need i have to walk around it so yeah so i can get it stuck somewhere okay yeah nee, no no not like that not like that hey it's already gone fuck delicious but of course that wouldn't be enough and trading smooth and silky stones is a matter of pure luck however we also have access to another bonfire aesthetic and if you use it in the Shaded Woods, you can actually respawn the first one we got. So that way we can have the three that we need for plus three. However, there's another item that we'll need for later, even though we don't have to worry about the repair spell. There is one location for which we will temporarily need a specific miracle, and it would be a waste to spend levels on attunement unnecessarily. But that would be for later. However, something that used to be for later, but no longer is for later, since that later point is right now, now... Holy fuck, that is a convoluted way of describing this. Well, it's time to actually fight the rotten now, is what I'm trying to convey. And just as I feared, even if I would be able to time my own attacks to avoid his hand slams, grab and cleaver slashes, there would be no way to survive the AoE. At any time during a second phase, he could initiate it after I already started my own animation. What a shame. It was a good attempt. What a rotten way to die.
So I would have to work around this by waiting for him to do the AoE and then hope he would have at least some sort of a cooldown period before he could do it again. Uh oh. Oh fuck, no! No, 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 Well, good thing that didn't kill me because I was kind of worried that it would. Okay, do the AoE, please. Okay, very good. Okay, now the win attack I can actually do something with. Yeah. Who? Ah, uh, was close. Oh. The Ooh. I never know exactly what that hitbox is. Would be nice if he would. You know what? I'm just going for it. Yes. Was enough damage. Nice. Well, that's the rotten down. But in order to reach the DLC for a quite numerous amount of dragon bones, and on top of that, flint ring, which provides a whopping 50 extra AR. First, we would need to get past the giants, and that was a giant disappointment. <laughs> Crap, delicious! If I only could get past these guys, I mean, I could practically see Flint's ring and those dragon bones waiting for me. But I guess my eyes were bigger than my stomach. Yeah, this is actually quite a problem because where else am I supposed to go in order to gain more power? I mean, the thought of dealing with the lost sin of speed. Or facing the armored spider 2.0 without the ability to hold a torch in order to keep the small spiders away. I was lying heavy on my stomach, so I had no other choice but to go into the one remaining direction, towards Iron Keep. And although there are dragon bones there, there wouldn't be enough to upgrade to plus 4. Oh, and speaking about not having enough materials, the skeleton lords may not be much of a threat in pretty much any playthrough. But then again, that applied to makers and the congregation as well. But the thing is that I kind of forgot to stock up on healing items. Because remember, I am constantly using those. But rather than choosing to go back to Medjula, I decided to go forth with intestinal fortitude. However, how meaningful would it be to show the size of my family jewels without Medjules from Medjula? I really hope I don't run out of life gems before uh, defeating this boss. Because that would suck. Just to be safe. Oh fuck, whoa! Oh, oh. That's not good. Damn it, I really <laughs> am not sure if I'm going to be able to make it through this uh, with only 24 regular life gems. I need to do it again, otherwise, yeah. Oh my god, this sucks. I need to cluster them together so that I can hit multiple. Oh fuck, but if I do that, I get stuck! Oh, the regen ring, ring. I don't have it. Fuck. That's a good one. That could have actually have saved me. Oh, they can block. Fuck, I'm not going to be able to make it through this. I don't have the resources. Especially not if they block. Oh, that was... That was multiple uh, at once. That was at least a good thing. But now I need to kill him. Yeah. It's gonna be tight. I do have a blessing also. And I also think this yeah, also restores a little bit of health. So it could be doable. Damn it! That was not the one it kill. Uh-oh. Please don't die! Fuck. It's just that little bit of health. I mean, come on. Oh. You know what? Fuck it. Oh, fuck. A bit of a shame, but I don't want to waste... <laughs> I don't want to mess up now near the end. Okay, very good. Alright then. 
Exit the class. Reference more than... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, this is not good. No. I literally cannot... Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. How far are you on the run, Lemon? You might be in the wrong, uh, in the wrong uh, chat, uh, Eurobluck. Now, one fortunate aspect of playing without any armor is that I would not have to go through the painful process of farming for the Desert Sorcerer's set. Because if you think that under these restrictions you would have any chance of a plentiful harvest in this valley, then I'm afraid you are living in a fairy tale. Well, in case you are, then let me tell you the tale of Belly and the Beast, which is anything but a beautiful sight since the beast can do more harm with its belly than I can. Yeah. Dying to the covetous demon. It's a thing that can happen. Well, fortunately, it didn't take that much to prevent it from happening again. Because it's mainly a matter of allowing him to roll over twice before attacking. And of course, just not getting greedy near the end. And that would be enough for, a, well, not a happy ending per se, but at least an ending. Although the ending of the playthrough is not even on the horizon yet. So now we go from a, fat fa from a fairy tale into an even older folklore as Mipha is quite likely based on Greek mythology. And uh, well, apart from actually entering the boss arena, the fight wasn't that much of a problem, even though I expected it to be based on my previous two runs, in which it turned out to be quite a roadblock. However, that was because in one run I could hardly avoid any attack, and in the other one I did only single digit damage. But this time my damage output was actually higher than hers. So yeah, it did require finding the right opportunities, and she would regain some health whenever she lingered about in the poison. But ultimately, it was really nothing to lose her head over. Well, be that as it may, boss fights are not the only challenge to overcome. Especially in Dark Souls 2, difficulty is found in traversing certain areas, and Iron Keep is definitely one of those places. First of all, merely dealing with a single enemy one-on-one -on -one was already an issue, and there are a ton of them in this area. But what's even worse is that there are two very powerful NPC invaders. However, that is where the Attunement Ring from before comes into play. Together with the Faith Boosting Ring and the Force Miracle. After all, that is a miracle that knocks enemies back but inflicts no actual damage. Meaning it doesn't violate the rules of the run. And it does allow me to maliciously violate these insufferable invaders. So first Sharon drops like a stone, and then Dennis was no longer a menace. However, for the rest of Iron Keep, I run and keep evading and relying on Ifri- uh, Relying is not the appropriate word, I think. Now, the thing is, defeating Smelter would be actually very beneficial because then I could acquire the Ring of Blades plus one. But uh, yeah, that uh, does in fact make me suspect that my damage type is slash damage. This is probably not going to work yet. Especially if I can hardly ever make it through the fog wall to begin with. Now, Smelter can be circumvented, and doing that not only provides us with another dragon bone, together with the one on the staircase, but the real issue now is that we have to access the hidden bonfire without having any meaningful way to deal with enemies. Okay, this is going to be nice. No, I'm going to die. Yeah, now I'm dead. Fuck. I don't even know if one of those stones to begin with. <laughs> Sepulchre only for Elden Ring is apparently... Oh, fuck! Oh, the door doesn't remain open. What the fuck? Why doesn't it remain open? What kind of bull crap is that? Oh, nice. What the hell? I was... Uh, that's some weird stun effect. Because now I'm going to get ganked uh, to death. Oh, come on. Just put the fucking thing in. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't know what to do now, because they're all lumped together over here. He's actually stuck inside of the doorway? What the hell is this? No! Oh my god. This sucks. Just put the fucking... No, work! Function. Oh my god. I can't even believe that actually worked. <laughs> well, so far so good, but now we have to go the long way around towards the old Iron King. 
And because it's not feasible to fight our way through the onslaught of enemies, we need to take the even longer way around. Well, I did successfully manage to lower the platform, so the only real danger now would be to get an arrow in the butt. But what are the chances of that happening? Uh, oh, really? Uh, son of a gun. Well, I guess this is not a running joke anymore. Okay, good. Now if I can iframe this, then it will work. Come on. Ooh. That was close. Uh-oh. No! No! Flames, get away! Ooh. Alright, we made it through. And given that the old Iron King is one of the easier fights in the game, I uh, foolishly proclaimed that he would be no problem, which once again meant I jinxed myself. I mean, yeah, it's understandable to say that after going through a tough area and then into an easy boss fight, but in this case that meant going from out of the frying pan and into the lava. How do I even function? Well, at this point I was still two dragon bones short, and there's only a single one left to pick up after the Rune Sentinels. Unless, of course, I would go and beat Natchka on New Game Plus, so I could use another Bonfire Static. Or, I could get really lucky with the Crow Trade. So, now at least I would be able to boost my damage one more time, before having to take on the Lost Sinner, the Duke's Dear Freya without holding a torch, and of course the two giants standing in our way of the final plus 5 upgrade and Flint's Ring. But of course we still would have to beat the Rune Sentinels, before we can even upgrade to plus 4. However, it wasn't really my damage output that was the problem in this fight, but how vulnerable I was right after depleting half my life bar, and two independently acting AIs ready and willing to deplete the other half. Uh oh, no stamina, no! Oh, good thing I wore the cat ring, because otherwise I would have died. So the cat ring actually did save me, but... Yeah, no. <laughs> Oh really? Crap. I thought, oh, I can hide behind the pillar. No, you cannot. You cannot. <laughs> no! Whoa! No! Really? God damn it, I cannot do this on an empty stomach. Hold on a second. Alright, I got myself a Mars bar. Yeah, I would normally have a Snickers instead, but you know, it's November. So. So yeah, against my better judgement, I decided to go back into the underbelly of Jung Leic in an attempt to claim the ultimate price instead of constantly paying it. Although it's not really ultimate if you are undead, I suppose. But the thing is that if I could get the key from the giants, I wouldn't even need to defeat the rune sentinels at all, given that I already have access to the lost sinner anyway, and in the DLC there are more than enough dragon bones to fully upgrade my weapon. And there is a little gimmick that can help you out. Because if you quit out of the game after killing only one of the giants, you will still get the key for whatever reason. But there is one problem though. You cannot quit out during an invasion. And there is in fact an NPC invader in this area. In my previous playthrough, the minus level 44 run, I had the issue that I made the invader despawn, but then he re-invaded once I went down towards the giants. However, it turns out that it doesn't work like that at all. After playing this game for all these years, I only now learned that there are in fact two invaders with similar names in this area. So what you need to do is go through the fog wall twice so that both will despawn. And then you can make use of the quit out gimmick. Well unless Forlorn would happen to invade because he can still fuck the strategy up. Fortunately that did not happen and fortunately you or something, I figured out how to deal with the giants. Or better said I figured out what to do because now I had more health than before. Meaning I could tank a hit, and then hide in the cave to safely heal back to full health. So, after quitting out of the game, I acquired the key, and therefore access to the DLC. Which was, uh, well, actually, uh, quite a painful trip. But acquiring all the dragon bones, and of course Flint's ring, would hopefully make the rest of the playthrough a little less painful. In fact, this massive damage boost made me so confident, that I decided to return to the rune sentinels anyway. Yes, they were no longer required, but after all, I am the bearer of the curse, and this is not your kingdom anymore. 
These are my lands, and I will have my revenge. My revenge! Revenge! I will show you revenge! So, as I said, we're directly going towards the Lost Sinner. After all, that's what we beat the Flexal Sentry for. And you would think that the Lost Sinner wouldn't be as threatening now, given that we have a fully upgraded weapon. However, that is a double-edged sword. Because I'm also inflicting more damage upon myself. Especially when the sword is already buffed. And the Lost Sinner is very agile and therefore hard to hit. While she has a relatively easy time hitting me. And even when I get the opportunity to hit her. Remember that my hitbox is kind of uh, very uh, tiny. Oh, that didn't hit? How the fuck did that not hit? Oh my god. This sucks. Oh my god. Oh fuck. I want to say at least I have iframes for this fight now, but <laughs> I have to actually make use of them. Hey, how did that not hit? Oh my god. Fuck delicious. Um, yeah, let's lose, uh, use a bright bug. Oh, come on. Well, at least I take a little less damage from my own uh, attack now. You see, I told you that defenses matter. For the self damage. Oh, but now it's oh, okay. Now I don't. Now, now we don't know. But it's also inconsistent. So who knows? Whoa, that's a lot of damage. Damn. Jesus fuck! That was half a life bar. <laughs> In two attacks. Also, I get him some really good RNG here. <laughs> Look at the RNG! Oh, ooh, uh, spear, uh, okay. Uh, uh, uh. Whoa, ooh! Okay, I spoke too soon. Alright! Wow! <laughs> that was not only massive damage, but also some really good RNG with all the jump attacks. Also that I didn't die there. <laughs> the lost sinner more like the sinner who lost. Alright, so this meant that only one great soul remains. And it's a good thing that I saved this one for last. Because I wouldn't be able to hold a torch to keep the small spiders away. Meaning I would have to rely on a limited supply of alluring skulls from Shelquar. And therefore I should only use them willy, but certainly not nearly. Given that there was a real danger of running out. However, that wasn't the only danger of course. First of all, my attack did way less damage to this boss than I expected. And I couldn't just attack at any given opportunity due to the lengthy recovery time of my animation. However, that applies to Freya as well. Because if you trigger her laser attack, you can run from her head hat to her butt hat, and then you can get a hit in. Well, you can, but not necessarily will. Ah, oh, come on, it didn't hit. Bounced off. Armored, sp armored Spider uh, 2.0 uh, Again! Fucker of the mother variety That, that didn't hit! That was just right... Thank you B-team Seriously, how was that not a hit? Fuck! Ow, I still got attacked. Come on. Yes. Oh, wait, the spiders can still attack me now. Oh, fuck, that's right. No, thank you, uh, Alia. Can I just hide here? No, I cannot hide here. Fuck. Uh, quick, uh, quick talk, talk. Yeah. I don't care, Alia. I'm uh, kind of. Uh, it's getting a bit hot on the color here, and not because of you. <laughs> I cannot, uh... I... That works. Here. Okay then. Jesus. Alright then, we actually made it to the castle. And despite my slow, shitty attack, I see no reason why my regular approach for the double dragon riders, Bimmy and Jimmy, wouldn't be viable. So, this shouldn't be a problem. 
Da -da 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 oh fuck. Okay, maybe the self-inflicted damage kind of throws a wrench of the monkey variety into my plans. Oh, actually, that wasn't even the main problem. The real issue was my misplaced overconfidence leading to, uh, well... Uh-oh. No! No! Fuck! This should be it. No! No! Seriously? Oh my god. Okay, let's not fuck up now. Especially because I need health in order to attack to begin with. There. There we go. Alright. Yeah, getting greedy is not the most honorable thing to do. Especially since this entire run is about giving myself an honorable death. But remember guys, this is all for your entertainment. After all, I give my life, not for honor, but for you, you know, the long latter part. Well, unfortunately, the life that needs to be given to the golem cannot be my own. And the mannequins are already proficient at draining your health bar without you yourself doing half the work for them. Okay, nice. Yeah, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Even if you die, he should be activated now, right? Uh, he's not moving. What the fuck? He should be activated. Oh, the elevator's not moving. Well, that's stupid. Oh, wait. I hear the sound. But the elevator's not moving. Oh, now it is. Yeah, that took, uh, took a while. <laughs> Next limit breaker video. Can you kill yourself in one seppuku with max vigor? <laughs> that would actually not even be a bad idea. Fuck, my stamina use. Come on. Oh, come on, see? Because of my stamina. Fuck. Well, that's nice. Fuck, Alicia's. <laughs> and I have to go back to the to the bonfire. Now, how much damage will I do to Mirror Knight? Well, what? Whoa, okay. That's not that great, actually. Of course, it's the unbuffed version, but... Well, it's a high number, but still. But still, this definitely should be doable with this damage. Of course, after a while, the invaders are going to show up. Oh, he's already going to summon. Shit. But now he takes reduced damage. But now I have to deal with the invader. <laughs> okay, two hits for the invader. That's actually not bad. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, the pillars don't really do a lot in this... Uh, in this fight. Okay. Get rid of... Hey, no! He stunned me. Uh-oh. Oh, fuck, no! Not to it! No, 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 no! Uh-oh. Oh, I got lucky there. He uh, suddenly decided not to attack. Fuck. The problem is the moment I kill the invader, the second one is probably going to get summoned. Oh, I missed! I missed! No! Ah. Yeah, as I expected. Maybe I should actually just focus on the knight then instead. Okay, if I just kite the uh, invader around, uh, this should be doable. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Well, actually, if he... Su whoa, whoa, whoa. If he summons now, I get a free damage opportunity. Oh, but he's... Uh, fuck, he's not dead. Fuck. Okay, that that sucks. I have two invaders, but I only need one more hit. Quick, kill him! Yes! Oh, whoa, oh, hey, hey, he's still got a stab in! He's still got a stab in, that's not allowed. Son of a bit. Oh, whoa, 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 now we have the, the, the chat horses. Hey, 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 hey! Eh. Yeah. 
Oh, let me just uh, praise the, the sun in the rain. I'm praising in the rain. I'm praising in the rain. Well, given that it wouldn't really be feasible to fight my way through Swine of Amana, I decided to get Gaurus Ring so that the Snuggle Spook could protect my butt from attacks aimed at said butt and then simply hope that I could maneuver my way through the Arts Rakes. And actually, the result was uh, quite surprising. How the hell is that one beast still following me at this point? Fuck. Damn it, but I need to get them away from the fork wall, otherwise how the hell am I going to get through the fucking fork wall? Oh, yeah! Oh, I got insanely lucky there. I got insanely lucky there. A few frames earlier and uh, I wouldn't have had any, had any iframes and going through the fork wall, because we all know how Dark Souls 2 is programmed. Okay, <laughs> so... First try, but purely uh, through luck. Purely through luck. Hey, but I'm not complaining. So, Shrine of Amada wasn't even so bad. And what's even better is that the area itself is much harder than the boss fight at the end. Because let's face it, Kermit is kind of a pushover. Excuse me, do you know how to get to town? Yeah, it's back the way you came. Okay, I should really stop proclaiming that easy boss fights are easy. But come on, all you need to do is hit his hat a couple of times. Of course, it would be helpful if he would actually show his head from behind his foreskin. And a giant katana might not be the most pragmatic instrument for circumcision. You'll understand if I don't come out from the shadows. My identity will be safest if you never see my face. <gasps> Somebody talked! No one is safe! I'm getting out of here! Yay! Well, apart from me just fucking up, the previous boss fights could have gone smoothly. But for the next fight, I had butterflies in my stomach because I feared that I would run into an actual roadblock this time. And that fear was justified, as this is where the lack of armor became particularly noticeable. Because here's the problem with Velstad. When the hell is it safe to attack him, when your attack has a slow recovery time and you cannot afford to tank any additional hits, especially not when his damage increases in his second phase. But the real issue is RNG, given that a safe attack opportunity simply depends on whether or not he does a follow up attack. On top of that, he can actually avoid the small hitbox of my attack, even when he simply takes a step forward after an overhead attack, can already be enough to cause me to miss my attack. My best opportunity in his first phase was his thrust attack, which he doesn't really tend to spam to begin with, and you cannot really bait him to do it. And in his second phase it becomes so rare that I initially thought it wasn't even part of his moveset anymore. But fortunately in his second phase he does the projectile attack, which you can avoid by running around him, providing an actual safe attack opportunity. Okay, good. Uh! What the fuck? What happened? I, did, I was behind him. I was behind him. What in the ever-living fuck is this supposed to be? Now, that is some fuck of the delicious variety. But a downside of the second phase is that he doesn't merely have increased damage output, but also increased defenses. Meaning he requires even more successful hits to take down. But of course, because of his increased damage output, he hits like a truck when he smashes you with the end of his giant bell. And when you're already this sore from all the underbelly poking, taking a huge bell end is simply too much to handle. God damn it, I died so many times against this boss that I literally had to visit Govlan to get enough souls to buy new life gems, even though they aren't that expensive to begin with. However, there is a very expensive item that has helped me before, namely bright bugs. So perhaps that could be the light to break through the walls of darkness and counteract the wrath of the underworld, as I didn't happen to have a flowers on hand. So this might provide me with just enough attack and defenses to make it through this mess. Although it wouldn't last long, so my best bet was to use it during his phase transition. And then, well, hope for the best. Yeah, that's actually true. In a sense, Velstad uses a bright bug in his second phase. That's basically what the second phase is. It's a similar type of buff. Although it's weird, I'm not doing... I don't really notice a damage uh, increase. Okay, bright bug is worn off, but... Who? Huh? Ok, 
Okay, two more hits, I think. Got him. Whew. That took way longer than I expected, but we got it done. Jesus, fuck, dude. Now, with the King's Ring in my possession, rather than going towards Alias Keep, I decided to get what I would expect to be the most difficult fight, not counting Surlon and Fume, out of the way first. And that's, of course, the Before Skin duo. And even though we didn't write Nashka's tail, it's also not the case that I am lactose intolerant, and the implementation of cheese was in fact in order here. And not merely because of their revival ability, but as my regulars know, I just can't stomach the throne wanker and throne defecator. So I made sure that the former would wank himself over the edge, and uh, I hope it was as good for him as it was for me. And to be honest, I don't merely call the other one the throne defecator as an insult, but because his peculiar walking cycle indicates that an incident related to the ruination of the undergarments might indeed have taken place. Although I suppose that's not completely unexpected when you have just experienced your partner edging themselves to death. Well, whatever may be the case, getting hits in, even one on one, was still not that easy, as he can both dodge and block attacks at least initially. Although for some reason his first swing tends to miss you as well. And although it's helpful when he puts his shield away and starts shit walking, his lightning buff becomes a problem when every attack you do leaves you with only half a life bar. Or two thirds if my own sword buff wasn't active yet. But fortunately his buff does in fact run out after a while as well. Okay, I'll just go for it. Oh fuck, I missed! I missed! Whoa! No! Huh? Heal, you motherfucker. Okay, that worked. <laughs> Do something. Ah, fuck it, I'll just go for it. Oh, I got him! <laughs> I actually killed him! Oh, nice! fuck delicious. Alright. That was a surprising first try. A little bit of improvisation going on there, but hey, it worked out. So, after defeating what I thought would be one of the biggest hurdles in this playthrough, and with the any percent completion in sight, I once again felt overcome with a sense of confidence and determination. Unfortunately, I was not the only one with a fire in his belly, as the Guardian Dragon happened to be particularly uh, fireball-y today. Yeah, the problem with this fight is that I didn't want to spend too much time around his feet because of his stomp attacks, given my slow recovery animation, but you pretty much have to since how many attack opportunities you even get in this fight in the first place are kind of up in the air turning this into quite an endurance test. After which I had to endure a test of restraint. Because for the umpteenth time, which I don't even think is a real number, but whatever, I jinxed myself by stating that an easy boss fight would not pose any significant threat. But my overconfidence once again demonstrated why greed is a deadly sin. Yes, I died against the congregation, covetous demon, old Iron King, and the giant lord, but the throne duo was a first try victory. I guess you just never know what to expect when doing a challenge run. Also, speaking of victory, although Sir Alon would be the most fitting final boss, I would first have to take care of the actual final boss of the game. Oh wait, I almost forgot to talk to the Maiden in Emerald first. <laughs> After all, she had a lot to tell me. Oh, ho hold on a second. Could you just come along with me? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a little out of the way, but this is uh, very, very important. Okay, uh, sorry for interrupting guys, but uh, I just have to have to borrow these for a second and uh... Alright, worth it. See you guys in the next video by the way Well, the unfortunate thing about Nishandra is that she is a bit anticlimactic for a final boss And it wasn't all that different this time around Although there was of course the issue of the curse orbs draining away my health on top of my self-inflicted damage So I used radiant life gems instead of regular ones and on top of that, I made sure I took things slowly, because you can actually bait Nishandra away from her cursed orbs. However, in the end, it was a bit like the ending of Ghosts and Goblins, where you managed to defeat the essence of evil itself, but you'll end up doing it in your underwear. 
However, this was not the actual end yet, because I am a Courageous Knight and the story is not happy end yet. So the only proper way to end this playthrough is to take Suralan down with his own weapon. Unfortunately, you cannot access Suralan without acquiring the crown first, which requires you to defeat Fume Knight. And although I did feel stronger welling in my body... Fuck, I just realized that most of you watching are young whippersnappers who haven't even played Ghosts and Goblins and therefore don't even get the references I'm making. Well, whatever may be the case, in order to get a final damage boost, I had to make sure to get the knife, get the Ring of Blades plus one. So hopefully I would now be able to make it past the Smelter Demon. After all, his damaging aura doesn't drain as hard as Nishanda's Curse Orbs, but this one you cannot really avoid. And on top of that, he can also stab himself in the stomach in order to buff his sword. But contrary to me, he doesn't inflict any damage upon himself. So, which of us belly buffed blade wielding bastards would prevail in the end? Whoa, 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 what the fuck? He just launched me into the air, what the hell was that about? What is your favorite amusement park ride? Well, it's complicated. <laughs> uh oh. Why does it do the overhead attack? Come on. Yeah, not that one. Oh, and now he does do it. Well, I... <laughs> Life gems are basically just candy in this uh, playthrough. Whoa, 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 whoa. He launched me again. Okay, nice. Nice. All right. <laughs> Devil Smelter. <laughs> All right. There we have the Ring of Blades plus one. It's not a massive damage in, uh, boost, but it will be something. Well, after acquiring the Ring of Blades plus one, I was pretty much at my max damage output. And I did indeed deal some pretty impressive damage, especially if the buff was already active, given Fume Knight's defenses. But regardless, Fume also has a massive health pool and is incredibly aggressive, meaning that I would have relatively small windows of opportunity for attacks. Especially given that Fume can sometimes extend certain combos. Meaning I would have to wait a brief moment before attacking to see if it's safe in the first place, or guess and possibly guess wrong. Yeah, this was definitely going to take a while. And the only real reason for this fight was to reach Sorlan in the first place. And I have much, much more experience fighting Fume than Sorlan. In fact, it was Suralan who broke me worse than my swords were in my Soul Level 1, Nukem Plus 7, Broken Straight Sword run without stat boosting gear. But this time, in order to get even a chance at revenge, I would have to survive this gut-wrenching fight first. In fact, with each death, I feared that my plan to end this run with Suralan would go up in smoke. The thing is that Fume Knight had a similar problem as Velstad. I guess he learned from his lore-based defeat because what kept getting me killed was the RNG of follow-up attacks. I would be safe if Fume chose to jump away after I attacked him. But that's not always what he decides to do. Uh oh, fuck! Probably not even necessary, but who cares? <gasps> really? Unfucking real. Okay, need the healing opportunity, please. Oh, fuck, I don't even have to heal. <laughs> oh, oh, whoa! Oh, 
fuck, don't panic now. Oh yeah, fuck. Ah, uh, whatever. Thank you, hitbox on the right. <laughs> Another example. Ah! Got him! Woo! Oh! Fuck delicious. Ah! Oh. That took an hour and 20 minutes just to <laughs> take down Fume Knight and we still have Sorlon left. Alright, we made it to the final battle. Well, sort of, because the B team was like, yeah, how about we gangbang the player from every direction before they can even get started with the boss fight. Oh, they're gonna love that. Surprised there are no toxic inflicting dogs in this area. So eventually we did reach Sorlon and uh, at least I could say that the first attempt was uh, uh, hopeful. There were two problems I ran into in this fight. Well, I guess three if you counted the hitbox of the jump attack. But the first and obvious issue was finding any safe attack opportunity. Which Sorlon literally doesn't have. The only way I could prevent getting hit while going seppuku was by sticking behind him so that he would attack away from me. But the second issue was that I hadn't fought Sorlon since about two years ago. So I was really rusty as you can imagine. Especially when it comes to his randomly delayed charge attacks. Which are especially a problem if you constantly need to find healing opportunities. Yeah, it took me a while to get the timings done and to remember that the best way to avoid them is by dodging straight to the right. So that even if your timing is off, chances are that you are outside of the hitbox altogether in the first place. But speaking of hitboxes, I was at least happy to actually have iframes this time compared to my previous encounter. Of course, it would be the most poetic ending if Alon would do the seppuku himself after the fight. But not only was I not going to get through the fight without taking a hit, but at least according to the people in the chat, self-damage or even just using a healing item already would prevent him from doing that in the first place. However, I took that into account, so if he won't allow an honorable ending, then I would have to recreate it myself. If I could get through the fight in the first place. Yeah, things weren't looking so well. But then that moment arrives where you enter the flow state and screen, stomach and sword all become one. No! Ooh!
Fuck you! Got him! <laughs> Woo! Holy fucking fuck up the fucker! In the most fucking way. Fuck. <laughs> what the? Oh my god. Ah. Wow. I was all tensed up that entire fight. Jesus fuck, dude. <laughs> Thou art of passing skill. Fuck, Alicious. That was an intense fight. Sir, I gone. Exactly. Fuck. Wow. And there we are. We managed to get through the game by stabbing myself repeatedly in the stomach. And we were even able to properly end it at Suralan. Although as beautiful as it would have been, he wouldn't end his life by performing seppuku as well. So instead, we'll just do it for him while wearing his outfit. Hey, it's the next best thing. If you enjoyed this video, then consider liking, subscribing, and tell me your thoughts in the comment section. And if you want to support the channel, you can become a member, or if you want early access to new videos, you can support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.